Hello, this is Tammy Lasseter Claire again. I'm presenting the pre-lab lecture for part two of tobacco analysis, which is GCMS analysis of nicotine in tobacco. So in this lab, you get to determine the concentration of nicotine in several kinds of nicotine containing products. You get to analyze the nicotine content in a sample of e-cigarette liquid, and then you get to choose to analyze the nicotine content in either cigarettes or in chewing tobacco. And so nicotine, like caffeine, is a stimulant drug and it is addictive. Nicotine's negative health effects include increased rates of cardiovascular diseases, potential birth defects, and poisoning. And so in the report, you can find additional references that will help you elaborate on some of the health effects of nicotine. The experiment consists of a GC separation followed by mass spectrometry of four selected ions. And this allows us to determine the quantity of nicotine within the very complex matrices that we are working with. We'll use an internal standard of quinoline to help get rid of the natural variability in the samples, which will help our reproducibility and also our ability to quantify the amount of nicotine that's present. In addition, we'll use standard edition spikes of nicotine to build a calibration curve. GCMS is an abbreviation for gas chromatography mass spectrometry. Everyone is probably somewhat familiar with GCMS from either organic chemistry or from instrumental analysis lecture, but just to make sure that everyone is on the same page, I'll go over the basics of how the technique works. So the first part of the GC is the injection port, which is attached to an oven. A sample is injected into a thin and very long column. The column is a glass capillary tube that is very narrow, so in the range of tenths of a millimeter, and very long, in the range of about 10 meters. And that is to allow sufficient separation of the mixture of molecules of interest. The inside of the column is coated with a waxy mixture that provides a nonpolar surface for molecules to differentially interact with. But another key part to separating uh, these molecules is the temperature of the oven, which gets ramped. And so the injection port has a high temperature of about 250 to 300 Celsius, and that is to volatile, volatilize all molecules that can be volatilized. And then inside the oven, the temperature will ramp from a low temp of about 60 to a high temperature of about 250 C. And that will allow higher and higher molecular mass molecules to volatilize and then move through the column. Helium is used as a carrier gas, which you may not actually see because the tank is always connected to the GC and always flowing. Um, you won't see the other end of the column as it is connected to the mass spectrometer. So the type of mass spectrometer is a quadrupole mass spectrometer, which is a very common type of mass spec to use. And before the entrance of the quadrupole, there is a filament across which a large current runs that causes electrons to boil off. Molecules within the GC collide with the electron beam within this zone, which is called the ionization region. And when molecules and the high energy electron beam collide, another electron may be knocked off from the molecule, making the original molecule into a cation that would have the same mass as the original molecule. It is also possible for the original molecule or parent molecule, as it, as it is often called, to break apart into ionic fragments, which are called daughter ions. The fragments have masses that are less than the original molecule, and they may have a charge of plus one or plus two or some other uh, number, plus three or four and so forth. The charge of the ions matter because in mass spectrometry, we care about the mass to charge ratio. So it is the mass to charge ratio that determines the flight pattern of each ion through the mass analyzer, which is the quadrupole type in this experiment. And so we're often interested in the fragmentation pattern that's produced by the mass spec because molecules um, form a pattern that is characteristic of each individual type of molecule. And these days, it is possible to do a library search within the computer database against files containing mass spectra of many different types of molecules, and then the search results return good matches, and it's fairly easy to sort through those to identify the likely molecule if your sample is an unknown. Because the cationic parent and daughter ions are charged, their trajectory through the mass spectrometer can be manipulated by external electromagnetic fields. That's the purpose of the four metal rods that make up the quadrupole mass analyzer.
Both AC and DC electric fields are applied to the rods in such a way that only a few ions can precisely waver through the electromagnetic gauntlet that they are exposed to. The ions that do not have the correct mass to charge ratio to make it through the quadrupoles crash into one of the rods and are annihilated and therefore not detected. The ones that get through at any given point in time have a very small range of mass to charge ratio. And depending on the magnitude of the AC and DC potentials being applied, the selection of ions that are able to get through varies with time. And so we can build up a mass spectrum from the series of snapshots to plot the rel relative intensity of ions versus mass to charge ratio. Assuming that the resolution of your mass spectrometer is sufficiently high, we can then assume that one type of molecular ion gets through at any given point in time. Now looking at the output from the GC, ideally we would have a very nice separation of each type of molecule coming off the column, but when dealing with the complicated mixture of polycyclic aromatics found in tobacco extract, in our example, the eluent comes off with poor resolution, which you can see in the total ion current chromatogram. The mass spectrometer is a secondary way to separate out the molecules which can give a mass spectrum for a particular selected ion from the chromatogram. And so within the mass spec software, you can input specific mass to charge ratios that you're interested in. In this experiment, we ask for you to collect data on four of those, the peaks at 102, 129, 133, and 162, which are the parent and fragment ions of nicotine and quinoline. Shown on this slide is a screenshot of the ion chromatograms for the four ions of interest in the upper panel. In the lower panel, we can see the mass spectrum for the 133 peak, which is a fragment of nicotine. Integrating the peak in the white trace at the top gives us a peak area and height information, which you can see in the green box at the bottom of the page. Given the complexity of the matrix of these nicotine-containing samples, we will use standard addition to quantify the amount of nicotine present in your unknown. Remember that nicotine is toxic, and so you'll need to take the usual safety precautions. Wear a lab coat, goggles, and gloves, as always in the lab, and you'll use a syringe and work in a fume hood when adding the appropriate spikes of nicotine to your samples. Remember that it is very important to get good data from your sample before adding any spikes. I recommend doing two to three GCMS runs of your sample. Note that each run takes about 10 minutes, and so you won't have time for more than about three replicates of your samples. And you should also take replicate measurements of each spike. The written procedure has already provided standard nicotine solutions at concentrations that are appropriate for these samples. Typically, we're aiming for each spike to give a signal that is 25% larger than the previous concentration signal. You should have at least three spikes to your sample. Using standard addition, you extrapolate back to the x-axis to figure out the concentration of your unknown. While ideally, in a standard addition experiment, you should get nicely clustered data points at each added concentration, unfortunately we don't get ni such nice data from this experiment because of some inherent irreproducibility in the experiment. So to get around this, we use an internal standard of quinoline, which is chemically somewhat similar to nicotine, making it an acceptable internal standard. We add a known amount of quinoline to our samples, and that concentration will, will be constant throughout the experiment. We assume that as the amount of quinoline that gets through the GC column varies from run to run, so too does the amount of nicotine, and so the two track nicely. Taking the ratio of peak area of nicotine to quinoline corrects for the variation in the absolute peak areas for each in each run we get much better statistics on the fit for the line when we do this. Having mentioned statistics on the fit, we need to figure out the error in the X data. One trick to get at this information is to switch the axes, plotting the concentration on the Y axis and signal on the X axis. For a more complete explanation of standard addition and quantification, please see the lecture notes and the separate documents about some of the statistical calculations that are needed for this and for other lab reports.
lastly, I'll end with a couple of recommendations for you. This lab tends to take up the entire five hour period, and so you need to be prepared and ready to go at the start of the lab. Because some of the components in your samples are volatile, keeping the sample on ice throughout the experiment tends to increase the reproducibility of the data. Also, because it takes some time for each run, you should be working up your data while you are taking additional data points. This way, you can ensure that you're getting good quality data along the way, and so that you don't figure out that you have a problem before it's too late to fix it. And lastly, in this lab report, the TAs are looking for the total ion current chromatograph, one of the four selected ion chromatographs, and the standard addition calibration curve. So make sure that you save and export the appropriate data during your lab period, and then include those things in your report. Thanks and have a good time.